we finally reached hooking up the control wires. This is the last thing we need to do in order to finish our selectable latching relay circuit. The first connections we need to make is we need to have a wire from momentary button A running from this point in the circuit to that base resistor of our upper end PN. We need a wire from this point in the circuit to this point in the circuit. Let me draw it in. That's the first wire we need to run. Let's put that wire in. We need a wire from this row in the breadboard where the lower right hand leg of the momentary button is located. A wire from this point to the row in the breadboard that that base resistor for the top NPN is located. A wire from here to here. I'll use yellow wire so it's easier to see. One leg connected in the row with the lower right hand corner of that momentary button and the other piece of the wire goes into the slot, zoom in, goes into the row that this base resistor for the upper end pin is located. This goes right there. From here all the way up to the lower right hand leg of momentary button A. Next we'll need a latch control line from momentary button B from this point in the circuit to the row in which the base resistor of this upper NPN is located. This is relay circuit A, this is relay circuit B, so we need a wire from this point in the circuit to momentary button B, the row that it's located in. Let's draw that in. A wire like that from here that point in the circuit. Now we can put the wire in. We start out by adding a piece of wire into the row that the lower right hand corner of that momentary button is located and then run over to the row that this upper NPN base resistor is located. Like that. There's our second control wire. This is our latch wire for momentary button B. This is the second, this is the first there's relay circuit A, relay circuit B, there's the latch wire in the same row as the base resistor to the upper NPN in relay circuit B. And then it goes over to the row in which the lower leg of momentary button B is connected in. Let's deal with the latch wire from momentary button C. We'll add in the final latch control wire from this point in the circuit with momentary button C over to this point in the circuit, the upper NPN base resistor row for relay circuit C. We need a wire from here to there. Like that. We have a wire from this point in the circuit to that point in the circuit. Let's add it in. We'll add one end of this wire to the row that the lower right hand leg of momentary button C is located. Add it in that row. There's the row. Wires in there. Then we'll take the other end of it and add it to the row or the base resistor for that upper NPN is located. That row. I just jumped over one of the latch lines but that's okay. In the context of the circuit it's no problem. We can zoom in on all those latch wires. Each one is the same. This is for momentary button C, momentary button B, momentary button A, and then there's where they terminate to each of the buttons. The stage we can do a test. And what should happen with the circuit at this point is that we should be able to push these buttons and each of the relay circuits should latch on and stay on. And then we can push the master reset and it will unlatch all of them. But there won't be any mutually exclusivity to them. That once we push them on, they'll all be on. Let's test that. We'll add our power supply back to the board. This test will let us know that our control lines are hooked up correctly. We have power added to the board. We can push momentary button A and the red LED should come on and stay on. And it does. 
we can push A again, it makes no difference to that first LED. It's on, it's latched via those two return lines bypassing that upper NPM. We can push the second momentary button B and this LED, the yellow LED, should come on and stay on. And it does. Pushing it again makes no difference. We can push momentary button C and this green LED should come on and stay on. And we can push the button as many times as we want to. Then if we want to master reset, just push the bottom button. We could start in reverse. We could start in the middle. But once you've latched them on, they're on to stay and you can't selectively turn them off. All you can do is hit master reset and clear it to go again. But this circuit in and of itself might be useful for some applications. That it gives you a way to turn on three different loads in any order, but you just have no mutually exclusive aspect to it. And then you push the master reset to turn them all off. So the last thing we need to do is add mutual exclusivity to this circuit via those upper control lines. Let's draw them in the schematic, then add them to the board. To add those final unlatch lines, we have our latch wires connected to each of our momentary buttons. When we press momentary button A, we have a wire that goes down and latches on relay circuit A. And it stays latched on until we push master reset. From momentary button B, we have a latch wire that goes from it to the relay circuit B. When we push this button, it latches on relay circuit B. And the only way we can unlatch it is to push the master reset. Then we have momentary button C. We have a wire from it over to the upper NPN transistor, which enables us to latch on relay circuit C. And it stays on until we push the master reset. But what we ultimately want is one push of momentary button A to latch on relay circuit A while at the same time unlatching relay circuits B and C. And then the same story with B and C. We push B, we want it to latch on relay circuit B while at the same time unlatching A and C, etc. All we need to do in order to accomplish that is on the same point in the breadboard, the same row that we ran the latch line off of, we need to run two more lines. We push this button, this line latches on A. We need a line from that point to unlatch B. And then we need another line from that point to unlatch C. Let's add those to the board. One push of a button will latch relay circuit A while at the same time unlatching relay circuits B and C. We'll add these two to the board. We can add our first unlatch line. Here's momentary button A. There's the row in the breadboard that the latch line's connected to. We take one end of our jumper wire, plug it in, and then where does the other end need to go? Well, to the upper PNP, the diode connected to the upper PNP for relay circuit B. We just connect the end of the jumper wire in the row that the diode associated with the base is located right there. It's connected in that row. Then we can run the unlatch line from A over to C. Run a line from this row in the breadboard over to this row in the breadboard where the Cath the anode end of this diode connected to the base of this upper PMP is located. So we just need a wire from this point to this point. Take a jumper wire, plug it in, same row as the other jumper wire as well as the latch line, and then plug the other end of it up to the anode of this diode connected to that base resistor for the upper PMP. Just like that. Back to the schematic, we have momentary button A and its control wires tended to. We can move to momentary button B. We've already added its latch line in, going to the upper NPN for relay circuit B. But what do we want to happen when we push momentary button B? We want to latch on relay circuit B while at the same time unlatching relay circuits A and C. So we'll need a line from B to 
one P and P associated with relay circuit A. That will unlatch A with a press of a button as well as latch B. Then we need another wire from this point at B over to C, the lower P and P associated with C. Like that. So we have a line from here to here, have a line from here over to here. Let's add them to the board. Here's the bottom right hand leg of momentary button B, the row that its latch line is connected in. We'll connect a jumper in that. And this is momentary button B, so when we press this button we want it to latch B, which the latch wire will take care of that for us while at the same time unlatching which circuits? Well, A and C. So we can run a wire to the diode coming off of this upper PNP for relay circuit A. Like that. It's just a jumper wire in the same row as the anode of that diode connected to the base resistor for this upper PNP associated with relay circuit A. Then we need one more jumper wire so that when we press B not only does it latch relay circuit B but it also and unlatches relay circuit A but we also want it to unlatch relay circuit C. So we need a wire from this point in the circuit over to well, we can use this lower, the anode of this diode connected to the base of this PNP associated on the high side with relay circuit C. Connections in the same row is the leg of the anode of that diode. And it runs all the way over to the same row that the latch line for momentary button B, this line, is connected as well as unlatch lines. Back to the schematic. To make our final two connections we have momentary button C. We've taken care of A and B with their latch and unlatch lines. Now we have momentary button C. From this point in the circuit we have a latch wire going over to relay circuit C. But we also want to be able to press this button to latch on relay circuit C while at the same time unlatching A and B. And so we have two empty slots on these upper PMPs. That's where our connections need to make. A wire from this point to that point, and then a wire from here to there. That'll suffice. Unlatch line from C to A, an unlatch line from C to B, and a latch line from C well, to relay circuit C. Let's add these two jumper wires in and we should be finished with the circuit. Here's momentary button C and its latch wire is in this row of the breadboard where the lower right hand leg of momentary button C is. I need to take a jumper and put it in that same row as the latch wire and then take that jumper and go to the anode of this diode connected to the base of this lower PNP associated with relay circuit A. Just connect our jumper in the same row as the anode of that diode. We take the second jumper wire, go from this same row in the breadboard with momentary button C, and go over to the anode of this diode associated with the lower PNP of relay circuit B. Connect our jumper in that row. And if we've made these connections correctly, we should now have a selectable latching relay circuit. Let's add power to the circuit and see, does it work? Turn the power on. We should be able to press momentary button A, have relay circuit A come on. If we press momentary button B, relay circuit B should come on and A should go off. And it does. We should be able to press momentary button C. Relay circuit C should come on. Relay circuit B should go off. 
and we should be able to go in any order so that only one can be on at a time. They're mutually exclusive. If one is on, the other two are unlatched in any order we want. And then to clear the one that happens to be on, we just push the master reset and then we can start back over in the middle with C, jump to A, and then jump all the way over to C. Reset, start with B, jump to A, and then jump from A all the way to C. We should be able to do that in any order we want. And it works. If you haven't achieved this functionality, then retrace these control wires. Rewatch the last few minutes of this video and chase down making sure that all your control wires are hooked into the proper rows of the breadboard as well as that they're actually in the row with the anodes of these diodes etc. We've done a lot of tests along the way I think everyone will have the tools to be able to find any misplaced wires on your breadboard. That's one of the reasons I wanted to go through this entire series and especially this part of building the circuit and testing it as we go along. That's a really handy troubleshooting technique to get into when you're building especially a larger circuit. Test each functional part as it will function. It won't run the entire circuit yet, but it should function in a particular sort of way given what you have built. Like these high side PNPs should be conducting when no momentary buttons are pressed. And I knew that. So it was easy enough to hook them up, drag their bases to ground, and then VCC should have been sitting at this point in the coil, and I could just take a wire, plug in here, and then touch to ground, and I knew that that relay should switch on and turn on the LED. And that's how we were able to test that the PMPs were in that normally closed or normally conductive state with their bases pulled to ground through those 10Ks. And then with the NPNs, the idea was we had to, this one should be conductive given that we have a 10K pulling its base to VCC. So it should be like a regular piece of wire stuck in the circuit. And that this one with its base pulled to ground should it require positive voltages applied to its base resistor in order for it to conduct. Then so we could take a jumper wire and put it here and touch VCC and see if it switched on the circuit. On and on, as each piece we added, we were able to test it. As long as we understand what it's supposed to do, then we can test it when it doesn't do what it was supposed to do. We know what to look for. But I hope this part of the series, as well as parts one and two, have been helpful. If you've liked this series, please consider clicking like on some of the videos. And also, I always appreciate subscribers to my channel. Until next time.